RJ, uh, one more thing. Um, uh, before we leave, we need to take a group photo. <laughs> Just a reminder. RJ, are you able to hear me? Hello, hello, uh, sorry. Yeah. yeah. Uh, you have to take um, a, a photo later. Yeah, yeah. Okay. photo. Mm -hmm. Um, you want to inform in our Instagram that we're live on YouTube? Uh, Instagram? Yeah. Uh, do you want to go? Sorry. You want to inform that inform. we're live in YouTube? Oh, like after this, during the any at the start? You want to inform now? Uh, no, I thought business oh. kalau during the webinar. I mean, like at the start. Oh, yeah. Okay. Yeah. okay. And then maybe you can resend the link that Misty has sent. Sure. Just trying to open my Chrome to get the feedback form. Ini introduction singkat aja kan? Like I don't have to say anything too much. Just uh. Yeah, as long as you beat the time, uh, like ten. Your introduction is still what time as long as it reaches that time? Yeah, two minutes only, yeah. Mm. Yeah, okay. okay, I'll start recording. Yeah, sure, sure. Ini YouTube channelnya, wait, YouTube channel LSF ya? Oh, Atmajaya. Eh. Oh, LSF, oke. Okay.
Um, RJ, we will start uh, admitting right like around 10.05, yeah? So it's easy for us to admit all. Yeah. Uh, okay, 10.05, I start the video as well, right? Uh, yeah, just maybe give us like two minutes uh, because when we admit, it takes two minutes for them sure. to hear, right? Just give me the cue when I should start the video, yeah? Okay. okay. Uh, Nikita? Or we admit a plan, Ms. Diaz. Uh, I think it's better to admit now uh, because one of the lectures is already asking. <coughs> oh, okay. Mm. okay. And then just uh, uh, run the video. Oh, dua kali. Uh, yeah, can. It's okay. Okay, RJ. So I admit now and I run the video langsung, yeah? And then you run it again, so two times. I re okay. I run uh, it again, I'll... but what time? Huh? Uh, run it and, uh, ka no. um... huh? Just Did wait I? for all uh, participants to join and then you play the video. Okay, how much participants mm -hmm. are we expecting? Uh, 100? Uh, 100? No, no. Yeah, at the <clears throat> moment, can we already have 36. So after mm -hmm. the 36 coming, you play the video, it's okay. Okay. And then yeah, play again I, later, yeah? Yeah, yeah I then, admit okay. now, eh? Sure. Yeah. Oh, anjir. Gue di telepon dari jam 7. Dari jam 7 orang cara, anjir. Gue megang zoom, gue gak bangun. Gue gak silent HP. <gasps> Okay. <laughs> <laughs> My name is Yoga Pravita, currently an Associate Director at EY Jakarta, qualified in London, UK, uh, been a member of ACCA for two years. Being an ACCA member means that I'm, I'm part of the global network that ACCA has got. And also, ACCA gives you um, credibility as a finance professional to, to work globally and locally. ACCA certainly has given me lots of opportunities and has helped me a lot early in my career. You need to make sure you spend time in the morning to have breakfast with your wife and also the kids. Uh, to me, it's very important. And also at night, make sure you get home timely, spend a bit more time and continue work from home. Working in one of the big fours gives you some degree of flexibility, which I appreciate while you're managing your commitment as a, as a husband and dad and also managing your responsibility at work. My name is Lasma Pujianti Saradistio. I currently work at Pasar Jaya uh, as finance and accounting head. Being an SCCA member, I am more confident in making decisions on a daily basis. I minimize the risk and maximize the result. There's a lot of job opportunities open for me. They give me higher salary, higher benefit, higher pay, home pay higher position. The best thing about my job, I can contribute more from my hands, from my thinking, from the teamwork here, because we try to contribute to make 8 million people life better than yesterday. The challenge of professional accountants uh, in the five to 10 years, is basically the competitions with with artificial intelligence. You might already aware that computers, AI, are capable of taking over any works that are being done repetitively. And we understand in accounting fields, there are a lot of works we do are actually repetitive works. Those will be taken over by AI. In essence, you have to be expert in exploiting your minds 
to analyze, to make decisions, and to solve problems. Only by having that, you can survive. Now, with all those challenges that you are facing, the question is now, what ACCA can do for you? Now, let me say this. If you are a member of ACCA, you can take advantage of the comprehensive knowledge and the full resources, expertise that they have. They have all the technologies that are needed in helping us to face our challenges. My name is Yoga Pravita currently an Associate Director at EY Jakarta, qualified in London, UK, uh, been a member of ACCA for two years. Being an ACCA member means that I'm, I'm part of the global network that ACCA has got. And also, ACCA gives you um, credibility as a finance professional to, to work globally and locally. ACCA certainly has given me lots of opportunities and has helped me a lot early in my career. You need to make sure you spend time in the morning to have breakfast with your wife and also the kids. Uh, to me, it's, it's very important. And also at night, make sure you get home timely, spend a bit more time and continue work from home. Working in one of the big fours gives you some degree of flexibility, which I appreciate while you're managing your commitment as a, as a husband and dad and also managing your responsibility at work. My name is Lasma Pujianti Saradistio. I currently work at Pasar Jaya uh, as finance and accounting head. Being an SCCA member, I am more confident in making decisions on a daily basis. I minimize the risk and maximize the result. There's a lot of job opportunities open for me. They give me higher salary, higher benefit, higher pay, pay higher position. The best thing about my job, I can contribute more from my hands, from my thinking, from the teamwork here because we try to contribute to make 8 million people life better than yesterday. The challenge of professional accountants uh, in the 5 to 10 years is basically the competitions play with artificial intelligence. You might already aware that computers, AI, are capable of taking over any works that are being done repetitively. 
And we understand in accounting fields, there are a lot of works we do are actually repetitive works. Those will be taken over by AI. In essence, you have to be expert in exploiting your mind to analyze, to make decisions, and to solve problems. Only by having that, you can survive. Now, with all those challenges that you are facing, the question is now, what ACCA can do for you? Now, let me say this. If you are a member of ACCA, you can take advantage of the comprehensive knowledge and the full resources, expertise that they have. They have all the technologies that are needed in helping us to face our challenges. Halo semuanya, selamat pagi, selamat datang di webinar kita hari ini menghadirkan kolaborasi antara London School of Accountancy and Finance dan Unika Atmajaya. Terima kasih terlebih dahulu atas kehadiran para teman-teman webinar hari ini. Sudah dapat meluangkan waktunya hari Sabtu pagi ya, di mana biasanya pada waktu senggang ini diisi dengan bermacam-macam aktivitas. Tapi terima kasih sekali lagi atas waktu dan kesempatannya untuk dapat menghadiri acara kami hari ini. Kita juga sedang live ya di YouTube channel LSCF, jadi pada yang ingin juga nonton langsung dari YouTube channel kami, silahkan. Perkenalkan dulu, nama saya Darren Richard Jr., biasa dipanggil RJ. Saya adalah salah satu member dari tim Digital Ambassador LSCF, dan saya akan menjadi pemandu dan host teman-teman untuk jalan alur acara kita hari ini. Topik bahasan kita adalah How to Manage Your Personal Finance, di mana akan ada beberapa guest speaker, para pembicara-pembicara yang spesial dan khusus dalam bidang personal finance ini yang bisa menuntun teman-teman semua untuk memiliki personal finance yang sangat layak dan utuh ya. Tanpa berlama-lama lagi, saya persilahkan Dr. Irenius Winanto Bimo, Dean of Faculty and Business untuk memberi kata-kata pembukaan dari perwakilan Unika Atmajaya. Silakan Dr. Bimo. Uh, terima kasih RG. Selamat pagi. Uh, yang saya hormati Mr. Manis, Miss Sang Yuan Si, gitu ya, uh, Bapak Ibu Loweni sebagai Kaprodi, Ibu Nilu, teman-teman uh, dosen dan juga yang saya banggakan teman-teman mahasiswa yang pada hari Sabtu ini bersedia untuk bersama-sama, begitu ya, dengan LSAF dan juga SCCA untuk menambah wawasan. Topik yang menurut saya sangat menarik gitu ya. Uh, how to manage your uh, personal finance. Anda sebagai mahasiswa uh, generasi muda begitu ya. Tentu pendapatan yang Anda peroleh saat ini mungkin kebanyakan berasal dari orang tua. Atau juga ada yang sudah melakukan kegiatan bisnis, gitu ya, baik dalam skala yang besar, menengah, maupun besar. Gitu, uh, apapun itu, Anda harus secara bijak, begitu ya, uh, dengan cara yang baik mengelola pendapatan Anda, uang yang Anda dapat, begitu ya, sehingga Anda terlatih untuk di masa yang akan datang betul-betul mendayagunakan uh, kemampuan finansial yang Anda miliki untuk uh, sepenuh-penuhnya untuk ya mempersiapkan keberhasilan Anda di masa yang akan datang. Untuk itu pada pagi hari ini kita akan mendengarkan begitu ya, akan menerima pengetahuan uh, juga mungkin sharing pengalaman gitu ya dari Mr. Manis dan juga Miss Sang Yansi yang menurut saya sangat kompeten untuk membuka wawasan kita bersama-sama bagaimana sebaiknya Anda mempersiapkan diri, terutama dalam sisi pengelolaan keuangan. Bagaimana Anda melakukan investasi, baik investasi pribadi, pengetahuan, begitu ya, sehingga tadi Anda melihat 
bahwa ACCA ini menjadi salah satu hal yang sangat berharga, sangat apa namanya perlu diperjuangkan begitu sebagai bagian dari perencanaan anda untuk membekali diri anda. Jadi tidak hanya untuk konsumsi dan bentuk investasi yang tangible begitu ya, tapi juga yang intangible berupa perolehan sertifikasi yang sifatnya global, penambahan pengetahuan, itu menjadi faktor yang perlu Anda pertimbangkan. Nah, silakan memanfaatkan kesempatan ini kepada para mahasiswa, silakan Anda gali sebanyak-banyaknya pengalaman dari Mr. Manis dan juga Ms. Sang Yuan Si, gitu ya. Terima kasih Ms. Mr. Manis sudah, dan Ms. Sang Yuan Si sudah mau meluangkan waktu untuk bersama-sama mahasiswa Fakultas Ekonomi dan Bisnis Unikat Majaya itu uh, mendiskusikan how to manage the personal finance ya terutama untuk uh, mahasiswa yang masih sangat muda yang nanti akan menjadi pemimpin di masa yang akan datang. Akhirnya terima kasih kepada semua pihak yang memungkinkan acara ini dapat terlaksana dengan baik. Semoga bisa berjalan lancar, semangat terus buat mahasiswa ekonomi, gali sebanyak-banyaknya, selalu jaga kesehatan, tetap semangat, dan jangan lupa untuk tetap bahagia. Terima kasih semuanya, saya kembalikan ke Arji. Baik, terima kasih atas kata-katanya Dr. Bimo. Dan sekarang kita juga kedatangan yang tadi dibilang, Pak Manish Gidwandi, yaitu CEO dan founder LSF juga untuk memberi kata-kata pembuka. Silahkan, uh, Mr. Manish. Yes, uh, very good morning. Uh, thank you so much, Pak Bimo. Saya suka your kata-kata. Is this, lah, apa, jangan lupa untuk selalu bahagia. Ya, yeah, I think uh, kita selalu melihat uh, uang itu seperti sebagai semacam sumber kebahagiaan. But actually, uh, uang itu adalah salah satu alat ya untuk kita bisa menjadi berkat bagi banyak uh, orang ya so 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 i think this this uh, adalah sesi yang sangat uh, personal uh, karena hari ini kita ba- ba- membahas mengenai personal finance ya biasanya kita membahas mengenai accounting perusahaan accounting uh, investasi financial management audit tapi hari ini adalah hari yang lebih uh, personal Yeah, jadi, uh, before we talk further, uh, mungkin saya want to show what video from Warren Buffet yang membahas mengenai bahasa uh, bisnis, bahasa keuangan, uh, mengenai accounting. Let's hear a bit, then I share with you mengenai personal finance. We learned here about, I learned a lot, but the most valuable was, was uh, accounting. And we had a wonderful professor named Gray Dean. Uh, there may even be something named for him down here, isn't there? Yeah, I, had, I mean, he, he was, uh, I'd been to the Wharton School. I went to Columbia Graduate School uh, subsequently, but and I took a lot of accounting courses, but by far the best instruction I received in accounting came from Gray Dean. And, and uh, there's nothing more important. I, I, People ask me what they should take in business school and, and, and uh, uh, or even if they don't go to business school, what they need to know before getting in business. And I tell them, you know, you have to, you have to understand accounting. It's the language of it. It, it. it would be, it's like being in a foreign country without knowing the language if you're in business and you don't understand accounting. So it, 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 you, you want to get as comfortable with that uh, as you are with the English language. Yeah, it, it, it's made me... Uh, Uh, a lot of money because I I listened to what Ray Dean had to say 53 or four years ago and been able to understand uh, what I was seeing on pieces of paper, what that told me about businesses and the limitations of what it told me about businesses. Yeah. But that's the way we invest. Uh, yesterday I was in Knoxville, Tennessee, and we bought a company, we agreed to buy a company called Clayton Homes about it. It's a big company in the manufactured home business. So we agreed to pay $1.7 billion for it. I made that deal over the phone without ever meeting the people there. But I had seen enough through reading 10Ks, 10Qs, annual reports, but looking at figures, 
What they tell me in terms of the kind of people even running the place, the kind of accounting decisions they make and so on, I was able to make that $1.7 billion transactions over the phone. Yesterday was the first time I met the people and their board of directors had actually approved the deal a week earlier. Uh, so it's, uh, you know, I couldn't have done that if I hadn't have, uh, you know, uh, I had a great time at Ray Dean's class. 53 years ago. So if, I, if I'm going to tout one thing, aside from this particular leadership class, of course, uh, if I'm going to tout one thing, uh, I, I, would, I, would, I would tell you that uh, get comfortable with it. You know, it, 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 uh, it may not happen the first week or the first month in the class, but, but get very comfortable with accounting. So that I run into CEOs periodically uh, who really don't understand it. You know, they try to bluff their way through and uh, you can just see, you can see in their faces, they're frightened almost when they, somebody hands them a, a balance sheet or an income statement. They really don't know what it means and they have to count on somebody else. And that's something you shouldn't count on. We make all our acquisition decisions ourselves. I mean, we don't call in consultants or anybody. We don't call in investment bankers much to their disgust. Uh, no investment banking fees in the Clayton Holmes deal. Uh, because, you know, it's my responsibility running Berkshire to understand enough about our acquisition decisions uh, to make them uh, based on the numbers that I see and, and, and what I see there. Yeah, you heard from Warren Buffet bahwa uh, yang menjadi bahasa, uh, yang men menjadi dasar dia berbisnis, menjadi dasar dia melakukan tindakan-tindakan uh, keuangan is actually based on uh, learning accounting. Jadi, I think one of the first things that students need to learn today that you, if you are learning accounting today, uh, accounting itu is not only a class, you know, that you are attending a class, a bookkeeping class, but you will be surprised to for, for you to you hear that bahwa accounting and bookkeeping adalah way of life. Yeah. Now, this is a big word that I'm saying. It's a way of life. Kenapa I said it's a way of life ya yeah? uh, kenapa i say bookkeeping is a way of life and because today hari ini kita membahas very personal adalah karena ini you you uh, ketika membuat decisions every day ketika anda nanti akan uh, having a job and then you receive income uh, you do not know exactly how to manage your uh, uh, finance ya yeah? nanti uh, yang terjadi adalah biasa uh, kita melakukan Oh celebration, we like to be happy with uh, money. So, kalau ladies like to see happiness in Shopee, yeah, Shopee, Shopee, yeah. When I hear the word Shopee, yeah, so uh, they feel very happy, yeah. Uh, so there's a lot of money spent to make ourselves happy. So it's a lot of emotional uh, spending, yeah. Saya lihat uh, teman-teman saya di Instagram semua pada lagi jalan-jalan di luar negeri. So I also feel saya juga pengen foto di sana. So uh, I spend, you know, teman-teman saya naik BMW, you know, I also want to have that luxurious uh, lifestyle, you know, it's a style statement. So you notice most of our relationship with money is relating to emotion. Ya, apa ya, menjadi, eh, jadi hubungan kita semua orang adalah emotion. Emotionnya itu ada dua, adalah emotion yang mencari kebahagiaan, ya, ada juga emotion dengan hubungan uh, dengan uang adalah mengenai rasa takut fear fear of losing money fear of not having enough not having enough money you know so uh, selalu hubungannya dengan antara happiness with getting something uh, boosting ego atau hubungannya adalah fear you know not having enough nanti what what will happen to my future we always think about the future you know uh, emotion emotion is about fear 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 so you imagine kita ini hidup di dalam society yang selalu berbasisnya adalah rasa takut untuk tidak memiliki uh, enough. So hari ini adalah hari Anda mengalami kebebasan keuangan. I want to ask you to feel freedom from uh, fear of money. Karena sering sekali orang bilang uh, independence of uh, uh, freedom of uh, money is from you have so much that you don't have to worry about money. Menurut saya itu salah. Menurut saya adalah freedom from money adalah you do not anda tidak perlu takut untuk kehilangan uang anda tidak perlu attach your emotions dengan uh, uang 
uh, jadi anda anda melakukan semua itu dengan choices dengan wise decisions ya yeah? so every day is a day of decisions every day is a day where you are actually being accountable with your money so hari ini saya mengajak anda untuk bebas dari fear bebas dari attachment of emotion dan memikirkan kembali why how can i apply accounting inside my personal finance so i want to introduce you to this guy called john rockefeller if you can uh, bring it to my uh, slides mr uh, rj or mr kita who sharing my slides Yeah, go down to the first uh, slide. So, yeah, full screen, please. Yeah, so one of the first uh, slide adalah mengenai John Rockefeller. John Rockefeller was one of the richest men who lived in this planet. Yeah, bisnisnya adalah oil business, yeah, tycoon in uh, oil business in, in US. So, saya menggali uh, kenapa dia bisa menjadi very rich man. Ya, uh, yang ini adalah satu hal yang dia katakan adalah bookkeeping adalah way of life. Apa yang dia lakukan setiap hari itu dia mencatat uang yang dia terima, uang yang dia keluar, right? Dia mencatat. Ya, ada famous uh, ledger called Ledger A. Ya, dia selalu mencatat itu. Ya, jadi can I encourage you that you know dengan hanya satu basic skill. Adalah mencatat whenever you are spending, whenever you are receiving, whatever you are doing is you are recording first. Itu I think adalah basic skill. Are you recording or you just okay di saldo saya ada sekian uh, cukup untuk bayar ini, you just spend. You know that that's not how it works. You need to actually open your notepad, ya yeah, open your Excel kalau bisa ya. Kalau zaman dulu tuh mencatat pakai tangan. Tapi use your Excel kalau bisa. To write a record, okay. Hari ini I sudah spend this much, yeah. Itu mencatat is the first skill. Kedua adalah actually uh, don't spend anything that is not planned, yeah. So everything, yeah. Mau anda uh, untuk pergi untuk entertainment, mau untuk uh, spending untuk kebutuhan, everything yang you want to spend harus sudah bisa di plan, yeah. That this is my planning for. Uh, spending for this particular year end. Saya mau berencana pergi berliburan. This is my plan once a year. Yeah, if it is not in the plan, then I'm not spending. Yeah, so I think the recording skill and the budgeting skill is what Rockefeller itu menjadi mendarah daging di dia. You always recording, old school banget. You know, so he said, now let me leave this little word of counsel for you. Keep a little ledger as I did. Write down in it what you receive. And do not be ashamed to write down what you pay away. See that you pay it away in such a manner that your father or mother may look over your book and see see just what you did with your money. Jadi anda harus ketika spending juga harus bisa accountable to someone. Uh, Mom, dad, saya sudah spending uh, this much. Dear, jadi tidak ada spending yang kira-kira membuat anda malu atau tidak wise. So you should be able to spend as uh, as wisely as possible it will help you to save money and that you ought to uh, do ya yeah, rockefeller uh, adalah orang yang sangat uh, uh, religious and one of the hal yang dia selalu budgetkan adalah giving you know he was one of the biggest philanthropists ya yeah? jadi bayangkan kalau anda mengelola keuangan secara benar mencatat dan the planning itu anda bisa keep money to be able to help somebody Ya, yeah, and anda bisa menjadi berkat buat banyak orang karena anda bisa mengelola your keuangan dengan baik. And that, itu yang dilakukan oleh John Rockefeller, and that became his habit when he started doing his business. Everything was basic business fundamentals, uh, analyzing uh, profits, analyzing expenses, analyzing plans. Ya, yeah. next, ya, yeah, so first thing is about uh, budgeting and recording. Ya, yeah. next. Now the second thing is this book called The Richest Man in Babylon uh, written by George S. Klassen yeah dia bilang bahwa pay yourself first pay yourself first artinya apa dia bilang setiap kali anda terima money what you do is first keep aside money for your own emergency funds 
right? Which is 10%. Jadi setiap kalau Anda terima 1 juta 100.000 itu dipisahkan and ditaruh di lokasi atau di tempat yang tidak bisa diakses, bahkan dilupakan. Ya, bahwa jadi Anda hanya mengelola 90% of your income. Ya, you only so 10% you directly keep aside is what you are managing is 90%. Of your uh, income, ini yang dikatakan oleh uh, George Clason. He said, "I shall tell thee the first remedy I learned to cure a lean purse. Do exactly as I've suggested. For every ten coins you place with your purse, take out for use only nine. Yeah, the, the lama lama the purse yang ten percent itu everyone will be fattened. Yeah, so pay yourself uh, first. Okay, now the third uh, the third point." Jadi Anda sudah mencatat, Anda sudah melakukan budgeting, ya, Anda uh, sudah sekarang melakukan keeping this 10% aside dan decide saya hanya akan mengelola 90%. 10% sudah ada di tempat yang saya tidak mau akses, ya. It's going to be there. Next. Live below your means, ya. This is from the Dave Ramsey the money answer book. So uh, they have kata, we live among a bunch of people who are deeply in debt and have no money saved because their emotions were tricked. Yeah, tadi saya bilang di awal, our spending is emotion driven. Yeah, just like drug addicts. Yeah, so, kalau orang stress itu dia sekarang bukan uh, berketemu orang atau berteman dengan orang. Kalau biasa kalau wanita stress tuh sekarang cari. Shopee, Tokopedia, yeah. So, Bu, Bu Wendy and all are, are, are smiling, yeah, because yeah, this is what happens, yeah. Kalau lagi stress itu dia looking for uh, somewhere to spend untuk menenangkan diri, yeah. So, but this is emotions that is driving uh, spending, yeah. So they say just like drug addicts, people have been conned into believing that happiness will come with the next purchase, yeah. That so all of your happiness. Itu datangnya ketika kita beli sesuatu. Tapi sadar atau tidak sadar bahwa kebahagiaan itu tidak datang dari satu item yang kita beli atau some stuff that we actually buy. Yeah, if you realize happiness itu comes when you are starting to have enough to give somebody, to be able to bless somebody. Yeah, so so actually if you are able to manage your money well, you will, you will be able to be a blessing to many people. Yeah, you probably think I'm writing about someone else, but I'm not. I'm writing about you. I know because I'm suffering from the same disease, but I'm recovering and so are many of you. The human spirit was not created to attain peace or contentment or fulfilling by getting more stuff. Itu tidak akan. Itu is like in your you know you you, you will keep getting uh, thirsty drinking water from the ocean ya terus menerus you keep wanting more hari ini beli satu barang besok jadi saya kalau pulang dari kantor ke rumah saya lihat selalu ada 4 5 paket yang saya harus ambil dan bawa buat istri saya kenapa is not of spending not of spending jadi ini bukan saya lagi like curhat ya ini benar-benar uh, we need to sometimes think that why are we uh, uh, emotionally driven driven when uh, spending yeah so itu adalah don't be driven by your emotions Next, apalagi accountant ya. Yeah? Uh, if you ask me in terms of car, apakah uh, if it is worth, tidak perlu driving luxury cars, you know, just functional cars, ya, yeah, untuk bawa you from one point A to point B, and itu can create enough in your pocket. It's worth not to have that fancy luxury. Ya, yeah, tidak perlu fly in a business class to show off an Instagram. Yay, I'm in business class, ya. Yeah? I don't, you don't need that. Now, yang paling keempat adalah understand the difference between an asset and a liability. Now, now this is very essence to your, uh, yeah, what is asset? Yeah, uh, Robert Kiyosaki said, asset is anything that put money in your pocket. Yeah, liability is anything that puts money out of your pocket. Simple as that. Lalu dia bertanya, apakah kalau beli rumah itu uh, menjadi asset atau tidak biasanya accountant selalu jawab beli rumah adalah aset ya yeah, but actually uh, he said depends on how you use the house kalau anda tinggal di rumah itu ya yeah, 
and you are not actually delivering receiving any income actually it's not an asset karena anda sudah KPR kan then uh, peminjam terus harus bayar cicilan so you are in a liability ya tapi kalau anda beli rumah itu lalu anda sewakan uh, dan men- mendapatkan rental income lalu nilai aset itu bertambah dan anda bisa jual itu aset ya getting capital gain nah itu baru adalah aset nah ini adalah pemikiran yang sampai you pikir kok nggak masuk akal nih Mr. Manis bisa bilang bahwa beli rumah itu is not an asset you know uh, but that's how asset definition is anything that generates income anything that generates cash inflow for us yeah so you can have asset creation by having a business for example you know by business that generate gives you some sort of passive income yang memberikan Anda bisa mungkin uh, investasi di dalam uh, saham dan mendapatkan uh, dividends atau Anda bisa investasikan di property and then get uh, uh, rental income Anda bisa melakukan uh, network uh, businesses yeah and uh, you know like like where something like multi level marketing and get uh, passive income and Anda can do any sort of investments that can generate income uh, so you are building assets so bayangkan bikin bisnis pun is not something that you do yourself because kalau di Robert Kiyosaki itu baru masuk ke di kuadran uh, uh, self employed yeah uh, belum masuk ke having a system having a business that generates income for you yeah beda dengan orang jual kentang goreng di 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 jalanan sama uh, kentang goreng yang dijual sama McDonald's yeah dia membuat sistem franchise worldwide and they get regular fixed income. So think about that building an asset sama building a, or keeping a liability. That has to be regularly in your mind bahwa hari ini my decision is it generating just an expense? Saya bisa aja beli baju, beli HP baru dengan tren yang terbaru atau saya bisa investasi uang yang sama untuk invest in my skills, saya belajar new skills saya, saya belajar new certifications supaya saya itu investasi uh, ke, ke diri saya itu menjadi aset. Jadi saya yang menjadi aset untuk generate income. Ya, yeah, so think about that. Uh, uh, what asset do you want to build to generate uh, income? Ya, yeah, so so my advice is around these four things, ya. Yeah. Uh, number one, uh, record, have a ledger, budget. Number two, uh, you know, always Pay yourself first, your 10%, and then you only manage the remaining uh, 90%, right? Uh, and then when you when you have that 90%, uh, live below your means, yeah? Uh, formulanya itu adalah sebenarnya 50, 30, 20, yeah? If I have a little bit more time, I explain. 50, 30, 20 itu apa? Dari sisa 90% itu, Anda spending f- maximum 50% untuk needs, untuk you punya kebutuhan. Things yang unavoidable, things yang you cannot live without. Your rental, your food, right? Your uh, drinks, uh, water, yeah. Basic needs itu 50%. Maximum, put a budget maximum 50%. Then the remaining things yang ter- the remaining 30%, right? You use it for your uh, desires, things that uh, you can live without but you desire to have like entertainment going with friends yeah going to cafes yeah itu maximum 30% yeah so 50 30 the remaining 20% is something that you should save and invest save and invest yeah so if i could repeat you have income 10% you keep it aside and forget about it the remaining 90% out of the 50% of the 90% keep it aside for your needs 30% keep it for your desires. The remaining 20% keep it for your saving slash investing. Yeah, so that's how you manage an equation. Nah, kelihatannya kayak seperti matematika, but uh, you need to slowly develop this discipline supaya you are free from money. Free from money adalah, adalah free from fear of money. Free, free from the emotion attached to money karena everything is running by the system not running by hari ini. So I mean, the way I build my, manage my house and my the business adalah everything has a plan, everything has a budget, nothing is 
hari ini moodnya Mr. Mani seperti apa so I spend hari ini moodnya wife ya Mr. Mani seperti apa so my wife spend no we have a whole budget that this is the budget for groceries this is the budget for our uh, spending for every weekends we have planned it out anything beyond the we don't spend yeah so it's, we don't have emotions attached to the spending of the money so with that I want to introduce you to our uh, another ACCA member that is a uh, very precious to us because she brings in uh, and, and makes ACCA classes uh, even more exciting dengan embedding personal finance uh, uh, into our uh, uh, making it even more into more exciting by making it a simulation yeah so just i could run the one more slide for simulation how we actually make ACCA classes in uh, in Atma Jaya even more exciting is having this sand table game Ya, jadi di dalam sand table game ini, uh, we give you a simulation of your life. Jadi in your life nanti anda akan dapat job and then you get income. Tapi you will also ada waktunya yang you may have sickness. So we will ask you that when you are having sickness, uh, do you already have enough in your bank or do you have any insurance, right? Uh, when you when you are in your life, maybe you also sometimes lose your job. You are getting fired. So in, in that case, uh, what what would what you plan to do, All right? Are you uh, going to ask help from your friends? Are your friends going to help you or not, All right? Uh, ketika teman anda butuh uang, are you going to give or not? Uh, ketika ada opportunity, apakah semua opportunities you will take? Atau anda pilih-pilih dengan your energy level, your focus level. Jadi this game makes apply your Uh, accounting and business decision into your life decision. So it makes it very uh, personal. So makanya belajar ACCA di Atma Jaya is interesting because we are going to embed personal finance uh, inside. Yeah, uh, just one more one more slide to show how uh, unique is this. Yeah, so you have this table called if you are wealthy but sorrow, right? Poor and sorrow, poor but joyful. But what we want you to do is be wealthy and joyful. And that requires a lot of choices and decision making. Yeah, so with that, uh, I'll close my session and pass it on uh, to my friend, uh, Miss Abby. Thank you so much. <laughs> Hello. Can yes, you... Abby, yeah. go ahead. Yeah, okay, I will share my slides for us. Uh, good morning, everyone. Uh, uh, my name is Abby. Actually, just call me Abby. Uh, my Chinese name is Shang Yuan Shi. Um, well, I am or originally from China, and I got my bachelor degree in China and a master degree in UK. And at the same time, I study my ACCA. And after around 10 years <laughs> since my first registration, I uh, finally uh, become ACCA member. And currently I'm working in uh, PT Country Garden Indonesia as a finance director. Um, but at the same time, actually around uh, two, three years ago, I started to realize the importance of personal finance. Hello? Yeah. Okay. Um, okay, uh, shall I continue? Yeah, okay. So yeah, since two, three years ago, I started to realize the importance of personal financing. So I started to take uh, many courses about how to manage my personal finance. Uh, I even took some course about, you know, the, how to trade in the stock market, uh, the, in, in the knowledge about insurance, uh, many of this kind of thing. But I always found that, um, I cannot make a system thinking about the personal finance, you know, so it's, it's the, the knowledge is just part, one part to another part, but I still cannot get a, you know, systematic uh, idea about the personal financing until I meet this very uh, useful tool, which is a wealth flow sand table that is by Manish just introduced. And I start to, uh, you know, get a systematic thinking about uh, 
the personal financing and how to really apply it to my own life. So I, um, I become a wealth flow coach to also guide the others to, to be on the way in, of studying the personal finance. Well, actually really looking back at my life, I really hope that when I was in the university, if I had a chance to be like all of you that have a chance to know, to study about personal finance, I think my life now will be totally different. <laughs> yeah, so I really feel lucky for all of you, you know, to, but by whatever the chance is attend appear today, and you can hear uh, some information about it, I believe it will have a great effect on impact on your life. And I really hope that for every word we are talking and discussing today, you can, you know, rethink and bring back to your life and make it happen. It really will help you. I, I, I guarantee that. So uh, actually, I'm also on the way of studying. I mean, it's never long stop studying. So actually, I hope today in my sharing, uh, all of you uh, or some of you will be um, um, take the initiative to interact with me. You may, you know, turn on your camera, can just stop me, ask questions or share your ideas, or even you can just uh, type your message in the, in the message box. So, you know, I know that uh, you are interacting with me. Okay, so uh, let's continue. So what is personal finance? Do any of you have any idea? You can let me know. Okay, so what does the personal finance include? Is it about managing money? Uh, what else? Okay, actually I checked in the Wikipedia, there is a definition about personal finance. Personal finance is a term that covers managing your money as well as saving and investment. Okay, it's quite interesting when I uh, take a look at this definition. It's first, at first mentions about managing your money, but as well as in saving and investing, they didn't say saving and investing what? Okay, so is it really only about money or there is something else here? Okay, so uh, actually, I think if simply we just say from the personal finance, actually, I think there is another way that can help us to understand more about uh, what the meaning behind it. So I find another word, which is wealth management. Okay, wealth. What is wealth? Is wealth only about money? Of course, except money, the currencies, there are other kinds of wealth like properties, you know, the cars, the fixed assets you have, right? But is that all? I think no, there are more. Okay, how do we understand it? Why is it important for us to end what is, understand what is wealth? Because only if we know what is it, and then we know what we should make right, what we should manage it. So I would like to elaborate the idea, the definition of wealth into two different ways. First one, the wealth in our outer world, in our outer world, okay, in our material life. Okay, I think for this one, uh, it's easy to understand. Yes, the money we have, the fixed assets we have, the different kinds of things we own. Okay, to understand the whole uh, scope of the wealth in our, our outer, outer world, I will use uh, uh, that a very familiar way for all the accounting students to understand, which will be the financial statement, the three financial statements to elaborate more about the wealth in, um, in our outer world, which is balance sheet, income statement, and cash flow statement. I think all of you know about it, right? Yes, I have studied, you know, many years. I got my bachelor degree in uh, financial management, my master's degree in accounting and uh, finance. I got an ACC, so I study a lot of things about how to make the financial statement for corporate finance. But for many years, I never thought I can use the three financial reports 
to exam my own finance. Okay, so now I would like to, you know, let you know how do you use these three financial reports to examine your own wealth. First one, balance sheet. In the balance sheet, what is important there? Asset and liability. Like just actually by Manish already uh, described, uh, okay, what is asset and liability. I think he gets a very good uh, explanation about these two definitions in your, uh, in your own life. So remember what he just said. The asset is something that's going to bring the money into your pocket in the future. And liability is something that can bring the money out of your pocket in the future, right? So remember this that definition. And then I would ask you one question. Do you think a mobile phone is your asset or liability? Can anyone answer me? That's a very good question, Abby. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you. Thank you. Well, it will be a good question if anyone can raise, your, raise up a hand and answer me the question. <laughs> okay, don't be shy. Is the mobile phone your asset or liability? Anyone want to share the answer? Depends on how we use it, right, Ms. Abby? Our mobile phone. Like if okay. we use it for good, it could be an asset, but if we use it for something else, it could be a liability. Yeah. Okay, yeah. Could you elaborate more? Sorry? Could you elaborate more? Like uh, our mobile phones, we can use it for maybe work and we can use it to generate income for ourselves and that could be used as an asset. But sometimes we use our mobile phones for distractions mm -hmm. and like using social medias or anything else that uh, might uh, come as a li liability for us. You know? So it really depends on how we see it, how we take a mobile phone as you know, it could be an asset, could be a liability. That's, that's how I see it. Yeah. Wow, brilliant. Brilliant answer. I think you have tried the simulation, right? Uh, I, yeah, once, yeah. A while <laughs> okay. ago. Yeah. So you really got the idea. <laughs> a bit. It's, it's a very good answer. Okay, very good answer. Yeah. And I would actually share you one of the story. From uh, many years ago, when the iPhone just launched in the market, you know, everyone trying to buy the iPhone. And there's a news. There's one high school student wants so much to buy an iPhone, but he doesn't have the money. He sold his kidney. He sold his kidney organ to buy an iPhone. It's such a shocking story, such news for us. If that person can understand what's the idea, the difference between asset and liability, I think he will regret it for, for the rest of our life. Why? Because he bought a liability, which not only bring out the money out from pocket, but bring out the future health of him out of from his body, from his self, health, from his life. So I really think that why we said personal finance is important, it's not only actually for university students, we actually start, should start from the teenagers to let them understand that what is the asset in their life and what is the liability? Are you buying an asset or are you buying a liability? Because most of the time, we just think that, yes, this is something I want. Others have it, I want it as well. But you never think whether it will bring any future income for you. Okay, so this is the balance sheet. Second one, income statement. I think this one is very easy to understand. It's income and expenses, whether you are making profit, depends on whether your income is bigger than your expenses, right? But have, have we ever thought how many channels of income we can have? Okay, I think most of the people just have the main income from their job, which is actually uh, the, if you don't work on it, I mean, if one day you don't attend, uh, you don't go to office or you are sick, you may not have this money, right? Okay, and there are some people also doing the part-time job. It's the same. If you, one day you don't go to your work, if you don't spend your time and energy on it, and you will not have the income. 
So is there any other easier income you can have? Yeah, of course, there is another income called passive income. The passive income is me this means you don't have to spend your time and spend your energy, you can get the income. But where can you get this income? How good is it? You sleep on your bed and the money just gets into account. Can you give an example what kind of passive income in our life we can have? Anyone? Please speak out if you like. Yeah, any passive in income in our life. Okay, okay. Um, I would like to share one. For example, I have a house that I can rent it out. And this rental income is actually my passive income. As long as in the beginning, I found a, I found, I found a tenant and in the rest of the month, I can just sleep on my bed and this, come, this, this rental income will get into my account. I don't have to do anything. I don't have to spend my energy and spend my time on it, right? So this is a passive income we can, uh, sorry. So to understand income in our life, we really need to, to know how many channels of income we can have. Okay, if you already have one or two income, is there any other channel of income we can make? Okay, so we have to broaden our eyes to see what kind of opportunities can we get to get more channels of income. Okay, let's talk about expenses. Well, there are plenty of expenses we have to spend. Okay, our living costs, for our entertainment, you know, different kinds of things, yes. So when we think about, okay, we have more income, we have more profit, do we always think that we have to try to increase our income? Have we ever thought that we need to control our expenses? Okay, so I think uh, in order to control our expenses, we need to, and to know what kind of expenses we are spending, right? I think many of us, we don't know. Yeah, because we just spend, we keep spending, like today, 50,000, 50, tomorrow, 100,000. Every time we spend, we feel, no, it's not much money, just more money we spend. But why in the end, one month in the end, we found, oh, we spend a lot of money on there. So this comes back to what the manager just said. Yes, we need to do a bookkeeping for our own finance, for our spending. Yeah, so that's the important we, we, we about the bookkeeping for those expenses. If we do the bookkeeping, we come back to analysis, we will know, okay, probably this spending, we don't have to spend. It just at that time, you know, out of my emotion, I just spend it on it. But for the next month, can we kind of control it? Slowly by slowly, I can reduce my income. Okay, the third one, cash flow statement, which is cash inflow minus cash outflow equals monthly cash flow. In the corporate finance, we all know that the cash flow is the is actually the uh, how to say uh, controls the life of the company. A company probably not making profit, but if the cash flow is still good, the company still can be going on. But if the cash flow has a deficit, the company will bankrupt. Right? For us, it's the same. If one month suddenly my cash flow is minus. What can I do? Okay, first way, I ask money from my parents. I ask money from my friends. Okay, if, my, if they cannot help or I feel shy to ask money from them, certain way I will go, okay, I will take a loan. But come on, I'm a student. How can I get a loan? I don't have uh, the credit, uh, uh, the, the, how to say the, the credit in the bank, what would give us a loan? Okay, that's what many students do. I don't know whether Indonesia is the same. Now. Some students in China, they take P2P loan, P2P. Okay, yes, it's easy for them to get the money into their account. You know, the first day you submit your, all your 
uh, information, your ID card, you know, all your content, uh, contacts of yourself and contacts of your family. And then second day, the money can get into your account. So easy to get the money. And suddenly in this month, I have to repay the loan. I cannot repay. And the P2P provider, the, P, the business, we would just call. Everyone call your family members, call until the end of the world, you know. Some people, some students suicide, really suicide because they lost all their faith. They lost all their reputation. It's so sad, such a sad story, right? But why we make ourselves in that situation? It's because we didn't manage our cash flow well. We put ourselves in a situation that we are in the cash flow deficit and we have no way to ask for help. Okay, that's why managing our cash flow is so important. Okay, look at this chart. Okay, I would like to use this chart to elaborate three kinds of way to manage finance. The first one, you got income and you spend it. You have nothing left. And the second way, you got income and you spend it. And even you buy a lot of liabilities, you take a lot of liabilities because you buy many things that create a liabilities for you. So in the future, you will be bankrupt. And another way, you got income and you buy your asset. And your asset keep in, uh, producing income again and again, and when you are actually financial safe, you take a little bit use of the leverage, you take a little bit liability from the bank, you use the, um, the leverage, and then finally you get into uh, your income bigger than the expenses. And at the same time, you have a lot of asset. Do you know what kind of people do in the third way? Let me tell you, it's the rich people, okay? The keep, rich people keeps buying a set, but the poor people keeps buying liability. That's the difference. Okay, what kind of people do you want, do, want to become? <laughs> I think the answer is very clear, right? Yeah, we want to become the third kind of people. So remember, buying a set, not liability. Okay, after talking about the wealth in our outer world, let's talk about the wealth in our inner world. Any of you have any idea? Okay, let's continue. Let's use this chart again. What is the wealth in our inner world? First, let's look at liability. Poor health, poor habits. Okay, this is easy to understand, right? You have the poor health, which will lead to which will lead to uh, the to have the problem in your future health, and your future health will make you spend more money to treat yourself, to go to the hospital, right? And poor habits, the poor habits develop and then it may need it to some problem. It's either probably in your, uh, in your work or in your own house or in your relationship, anything that probably later you have to spend the money to fix it, complaints. When something happens, what do you usually do? Do you complain or thinking about how to solve it? Little voices, what is little voices? Little voices is sometimes when you are thinking about something or you want to make a decision, there is always another voice in your mind hold you back. Yeah, tell you that, no, you cannot do it. You are not good enough. All this kind of thing that's lingering in your mind to hold you back. Or it's just like when you want to get up early in the morning, 
and then another voice tell you, no, no, you can take a rest because today is Saturday. Yeah, this kind of thing. Okay, lack of confidence. Yeah, confidence is so important. You're confident enough, like me, am I confident enough, enough to talk in front of all you Indonesian students, you know? I cannot speak Bahasa well, but still can I, you know, just show my idea with you? Yeah, I just try to use my poor English to share with you. <laughs> so I have to build up my confidence, right? It's the same of you. Yeah. Okay. Poor relationship. Okay. Um, I think for the people already in the marriage or in a relationship, we really, really know how bad if a poor relationship you have will impact your life. It's really, you know, hungry around. It's, it's not nice. You cannot focus on your work, you know. You make some uh, not irrational decisions, all this kind of thing. So poor relationship. Okay. Of course, as such, it's in the opposite way. You have good health. You have good habits. You are a accountable, uh, accountable person. And you have the self-awareness. Why? What is self-awareness? Self-awareness is means that when you face something, you have the uh, intention to, to rethink and to examine yourself and find out the way. You know, you are more sensitive to find the solution. And full of confidence, healthy relationship. All these kind of things are the wells, are the assets in your inner world. Why? Because all the assets, this kind of asset can bring you in the future income, right? If you have good health, you don't spend the money in your, uh, in your future. You, know, you, you, you have less opportunity than others to, to get sick. And you have more time to focus on your work. And the, all of this will produce income for you. But the liability, the liability can create the future expenses for you. So it's the same, which we should do for our, to manage our wealth in the, our inter, inter world. Yes, we, we invest in the asset, not the liability. This is quite a good idea, you know, because is it like our intangible asset and intangible liability that the same as in our financial statement, right? So I think it's quite an interesting idea we use the, uh, financial statement to elaborate our own personal finance. You can find that everything can, can match it. Yeah, this is our intangible ones. Okay, the second one I want to introduce all of you is the five elements of wealth. What are the five elements of wealth? Why do we have to know the five elements of wealth? Time, energy, network, capabilities, and money. Okay, these are the five many elements of wealth. Why do we have to know about it? Because by knowing about it, we are not only focusing on one, one of the wealth only. We know that the wealth have many elements that actually we should manage all of them. But most of the people, most of us only focus on money, okay? We ignore the other four elements of the wealth. But I would like to let you know, if we make a sequence for these five elements, money actually should be the last one you focus on. Yeah. The first one, the most important is time. Why time is important? Have ever... Uh, any one of you watch the Korean, Korean soap opera, uh, my, my Love from the Star? No? <laughs> that, that Professor Jin Du yeah, um, lived for hundreds of years and very rich. Why? Because he lived long enough. He had experienced several cycles of uh, uh, economic cycle. He knows how is the uh, how to make an investment. He got uh, enough knowledge and experience so he can make a lot of money. So time is important. Our life 
Yeah, we all born as a baby, but in the end, how old we can live on? This differs so much because if you don't have the time to live on this world, there's nothing you can make. So the time, time is important. Second one, energy. This energy means that whether you have the enough house, you can put in your life and put in your work. Okay, we always say healthy is number one. Healthy is one and all others is zero. Because if you don't have health, you have nothing. Network. Network, I, I, I think I no need for me to say how important the network is. Yeah, I think all of you should know. Capabilities, yes, capabilities. Yes, yeah, so we do spend so much time to improve our capabilities. Yeah, we study a lot of things. You know, we study, we try to get a good score in the, in the university. But after graduate, is it a stop? Shall we just stop here? That's the thing we have to consider. When you really get into the, get into work, get into this society, get into the real world, you will know the things you learn from the university is just part of it. There are so many other capabilities we should get. So never stop improving your capabilities. So the last one, money. Money is of course important. Why? Compared to the uh, people who get a big fortune from their parents' inheritance, with the people who didn't get the inheritance, of course, their starting line is different. So the money is helpful and important. But if we come back to the other five, uh, four elements of the wealth, if we have the enough time, if we have enough energy, we have a broad network and we have a lot of capabilities, finally, we can make a lot of money. We will not be worse than the people who inherit from their parents, okay? So how? Yeah, this is our topic today, right? How to manage our finance? How do we do it? There are some ideas I would like to share with all of you. First, act like the rich. <laughs> Before we just said act like the rich, we buy the assets and try to avoid the liabilities, right? So there are certain one. Please let us act like the rich. Invest in brain. Yes. This is the best asset in us, actually. Yeah, it's never wrong for you to invest in your brain, which is to broaden your knowledge, improve your capabilities, know how to get your, um, how to get along with others, all these kind of things is coming, actually coming from your brain. So never forget to invest in your brain and make, purposeful practice, okay? Why we say purposeful practice? You may have heard that, okay, if, if someone want to major in something, he just need to spend enough time and then finally he can master it. Is that true? If one person can be only become a master of something, if he makes purposeful practice, yeah not making practice, but making purposeful practice. What is a purposeful practice? You try something and you found, uh, sorry, uh, and you practice something and you finally can make a summary of it. And then the second time you improve it and you know what is your target. In this kind of thing, you can have a purposeful practice. For example, um, someone is invest in the stock market when they are young, they can try to spend just uh, try a little bit like several million. Okay, you may lose all of it in your first trial. It's okay. Yeah, you make a summary. Why do you have to you learn? Why do you have uh, why did you lose the money? And after you're learning, okay, you try the second time. But if you try in the year uh, early age, like in 20, I think when the year, when it reaches to your uh, year 30, 
you will feel that you have you really thanks to all the mistakes and the, all the loss you made in your year 20. Because of all those practice give you so much knowledge and experience and it will help you to avoid the bigger loss in the future. So try to practice from now. Second one, does everyone, anyone want to get rich overnight? Yeah, please, please give me answer. Yeah, let me adjust my laptop as well. Yeah, give me answer. Do you want to become rich overnight? Um, sorry, I have a problem with my laptop <laughs> charging. Sorry, sorry. Mm. Um, hey, wait a minute, because my, my laptop is not charging now. Um, I have to say sorry, probably I have to change your laptop because it's not charging now. It's going to be shut off soon. Yeah, sorry, I will change into my phone. <laughs> sorry about it. That, that's fine, Miss Eddie. Okay. So yes. it's a few more, few more slides, right? Yes, yes, yes. Okay. Yeah, maybe you can just conclude then Miss uh, Lydia can move on first, then you can come in. Yeah, sure, sure, sure. Sorry about yeah. it. <laughs> yeah, no worries. Yeah. Okay. Okay. Uh, I think Ms. Abby will come back to you in a bit. Uh, for the moment, well, we have uh, Ms. Lydia, yeah? Ms. Lydia will be sharing an ACCA introduction. And yes. tell, tell us more about ACCA. So please, Ms. Lydia. Okay. Uh, first of all, thank you for Mr. Manis and Ms. AB for the knowledge that is very useful for us uh, in managing our personal finance. Thank you, Mr. Manis and Ms. AB. Okay, maybe uh, I will uh, continue with the explanation about ACCA. Maybe uh, let me explain in Bahasa, Mr. Manis and Ms. AB. Okay, thank you, RJ. Uh, uh, sekarang mungkin boleh minta tolong bantuan dari teman-teman uh, yang uh, akan play untuk PPT-nya. Yeah, one moment, yeah, Miss Lady. Okay. Baik, sudah. Oke, okay. terima kasih banyak teman-teman uh, sebelumnya, teman-teman mahasiswa dan tak lupa juga di sini ada Ibu ini gitu ya. Terima kasih banyak Ibu untuk sediaannya untuk hadir. Uh, mungkin dari tadi kita sudah sudah banyak uh, mulai uh, mengulas tentang dan mulai menyinggung tentang SCCA. Mungkin uh, di sini gitu ya uh, masih banyak dari teman-teman uh, mahasiswa yang mungkin belum familiar nih untuk tahu apa sih sebenarnya SCCA gitu ya. Jadi uh, secara singkatnya uh, saya jelasin dulu kali ya untuk SCCA itu singkatan dari apa. Jadi SCCA itu adalah kepanjang uh, eh, singkatan gitu ya dari Association of Chartered Certified Accountant. Jadi pada dasarnya SCCA itu adalah uh, suatu organisasi global gitu ya untuk para pekerja profesional di bidang akuntansi and finance. Nah, uh, kenapa kita bilang pekerja profesional gitu ya? Karena seorang akuntan dengan uh, de diharapkan itu memiliki suatu sertifikasi. Salah satunya di sini yang memang uh, sudah bekerja sama dengan prodi akuntansi itu adalah sertifikasi SCCA ini teman-teman ya. Uh, Uh, apa namanya sertifikasi sertifikasi SCCA ini itu banyak sekali dicari oleh perusahaan-perusahaan besar ya nanti kita singgung nih perusahaannya apa aja yang akan uh, banyak uh, menerima para-para uh, akuntan yang memiliki sertifikasi SCCA sebelumnya kita cari tahu dulu nih kenapa sih gitu ya SCCA itu banyak dicari dari perusahaan-perusahaan besar karena uh, sertifikasi SCCA ini uh, itu merepresentasikan 
suatu integritas gitu ya dan juga kemampuan bisnis yang handal serta memiliki kemampuan yang kualifikasi yang sangat baik tentu saja dalam bidang akuntansi dan finance. Jadi SCCA uh, itu kalau secara sederhana uh, saya biasa bilang itu adalah sertifikasi profesional yang sifatnya global gitu ya di mana saja itu akan diakui di seluruh dunia. Oke, okay, maybe next please for the next slide. Oke. Okay. Eh uh, Apakah teman-teman di sini punya keinginan untuk sukses gitu ya di suatu saat nanti pada saat um, menjalankan karir kalian gitu ya seperti anggota-anggota SCCA lainnya. Nah, uh, next slide please. Ya, di slide ini teman-teman bisa lihat nih siapa aja sih orang-orang Indonesia dan juga beberapa orang dari luar negeri gitu ya yang memang memegang gelar SCCA dan tentu saja kita bisa bilang sukses di bidangnya. Pertama di sini uh, pembicara kita tadi ya, itu adalah Mr. Manis Gitweni gitu ya. Mr. Manis ini uh, itu adalah salah satu pemegang gelar SCCA juga yang ada di Indonesia. Uh, dan juga beliau itu adalah seorang CEO dan juga uh, founder dari London School of Accountancy and Finance atau disingkatnya LSAF. Dan LSAF ini perlu juga teman-teman ketahui gitu ya uh, adalah salah satu partner kita gitu ya dalam melakukan pendidikan atau pelatihan sertifikasi untuk SCCA itu gitu ya tadi juga Mr. Mani sudah menyampaikan materinya di awal selanjutnya nah ini untuk teman-teman yang suka traveling gitu ya dan biasa menggunakan apa namanya transportasi udara dengan pesawat salah satunya ada Air, Air Asia saya Uh, yakin pasti juga ada yang tahu siapa beliau gitu ya founder dan CEO-nya Air Asia itu adalah Tony Fer uh, Tony Fernandez gitu ya beliau ini juga salah satu pemegang gelar SCCA. Nah selanjutnya uh, ada Daniel Hankinson ya Daniel Hankinson ini adalah seorang CFO Chief Financial Officer dari salah satu bank besar juga gitu ya HSBC di Indonesia. Ada lagi ada nama, uh, namanya adalah Wan Resli Abdullah. Beliau juga salah seorang CFO dari Bank Siambi Niaga. Jadi para petinggi-petinggi atau banker-banker di Indonesia untuk bank-bank gitu ya. Itu uh, mayoritas punya gelar SCC ini. Selanjutnya ada Ignatius Jonah. Nih, saya juga yakin teman-teman di sini pasti sudah uh, familiar gitu ya dengan wajah beliau. Beliau ini itu adalah mantan Menteri Perhubungan dan CEO KI. Dan kebetulan istri beliau itu adalah namanya Ibu Ratnawati Jonan, itu adalah juga salah seorang uh, auditor di Ernst and Young, salah satu KAP terbesar gitu ya. Uh, Ibu Ratnawati Jonan itu juga seorang uh, akuntan juga gitu ya. Selanjutnya ada Sandiaga Uno. Nah, Sandiaga Uno ini itu adalah juga uh, sekarang kita kenal sebagai Menteri Pariwisata dan Ekonomi Kreatif atau Men Menpa Menparekraf gitu ya. Nah ini sebelum menjadi seorang menteri gitu ya, beliau itu juga mendirikan suatu perusahaan gitu ya, namanya adalah Saratoga Investama uh, Sedaya. Mereka, uh, beliau juga memiliki gelar SCCA ini teman-teman. Dan berikutnya ada Hengki Hiwarno. Hengki Hiwarno ini adalah Principal Advisor Director dari KPMG. Nah KAP lagi nih. Ya jadi uh, bisa dibilang SCCA itu sudah... Uh, apa namanya dikenal banyak terutama di KAP KAP uh, besar juga gitu ya dan uh, terakhir gitu ya ada Mr Eugene Galbraith ini adalah juga seorang CFO dari Bank Sentral Asia atau BCA and many more jadi bisa dibilang uh, SCCA ini sudah mendunia gitu ya pasti dikenal di mana-mana dan bahkan soal petinggi-petinggi perusahaan pun uh, itu banyak yang sudah memiliki gelar SCCA. Next please. Nah, di sini teman-teman bisa lihat ya bahwa SCCA atau Association of Charter Certified Accountants itu uh, adalah salah satu badan global termuka ya khusus untuk se, apa namanya di bidang akuntansi. Jadi nantinya akan melahirkan akuntan-akuntan profesional. SCCA sendiri itu didirikan pada tahun 1904 di Inggris. Base camp-nya di sana. Ya. Nah, di sini visi SCCA di tahun 2020 dan hingga kini itu adalah menjadi top one leader atau nomor satu dalam mengembangkan profesi akuntansi profesional yang tentu saja dibutuhkan oleh dunia kita. Next, please. Oke. Okay. 
Nah, dari sini uh, tadi juga sempat saya singgung ya bahwa SCCA itu adalah badan akuntansi profesional yang termuka di dunia. Di mana uh, SCCA itu sudah memiliki 110 kantor. Ya, 110 kantor dan menjadi pusat di 52 negara. Selanjutnya, uh, SCCA juga sudah memiliki lebih dari 7.571 pemberi kerja yang uh, sudah diakui. Jadi istilahnya kita adalah approved employer. Jadi adalah perusahaan yang memang mengakui SCCA untuk bisa menerima uh, karyawannya bekerja di perusahaan mereka. Lalu berikutnya ada uh, 328 uh, apa namanya ya approved learning provider. Ya, jadi ada provider-provider khusus yang memang akan mendukung proses pembelajaran dari SCCA. Itu eh, apa namanya menjadi eh, penyokong juga dalam eh, mengembangkan pendidikan SCCA itu sendiri. Selanjutnya ada 1901 program exemption terakreditasi dari 908 institusi. Nah, salah satunya prodi akuntansi nih teman-teman. Jadi prodi akuntansi Unika Atma Jaya itu sudah mendapatkan akreditasi dari SCCA. Dan yang terakhir, SCCA sendiri juga sudah memiliki 453 kemitraan strategis. Jadi bisa terlihat ya teman-teman ya bahwa ini memang menjangkau seluruh dunia gitu ya, di mana membernya sendiri sudah ada 290, 219 ribu gitu ya, dan ada 527 ribu student yang memang uh, sedang ongoing gitu ya untuk nanti akhirnya akan menjadi uh, pemegang uh, sertifikasi SCCA dan itu tersebar di 179 negara. Oke, okay. selanjutnya. Oke, okay. ini adalah kemitraan strategisnya SCCA. Jadi uh, SCCA ini bisa dibilang bekerja sama dengan banyak pihak. Jadi untuk memudahkan uh, uh, apa namanya para akuntan gitu ya untuk bisa bekerja di manapun yang diinginkan SCCA itu sudah uh, membuat perjanjian untuk bisa saling bekerja sama atau saling mengakui gitu ya dari beberapa badan akuntansi global yang tentu saja juga diakui di seluruh dunia di sini teman-teman bisa lihat ada cert, uh, chartered accountant uh, Australia and New Zealand lalu ada C, uh, CPA juga chartered professional accountant lalu ada juga CPA Malaysia ada juga Accountant and Auditor Association dan uh, berikutnya itu adalah CPA dari uh, Hong Kong Institute gitu ya. Jadi uh, memang sudah worldwide sekali untuk SCCA ini. Baik, uh, selanjutnya. Nah, di sini SCCA karena memang uh, bertujuan untuk mengembangkan uh, apa namanya? tadi uh, apa namanya? mengembangkan profesi akuntansi secara profesional gitu ya. Uh, tentu saja SCCA ini menjalin banyak kerjasama gitu ya uh, dengan banyak institusi pendidikan ya jadi tujuannya adalah untuk mempersiapkan calon-calon SCCA lainnya sejak dini gitu jadi SCCA ini uh, bekerja sama dengan banyak banyak uh, dengan banyak pihak institusi pendidikan kalian bisa lihat di sini logonya gitu ya di UI di Binus Atma Jaya sendiri pun juga sudah uh, bekerja sama gitu ya uh, Lalu berikutnya ada juga dari uh, Kristen Petra, Trisakti, UPH, uh, Pajajaran dan masih banyak lagi. Gitu. Jadi memang tujuannya adalah untuk mempersiapkan calon-calon SCCA lainnya sejak uh, dari bangku perkuliahan. Baik, selanjutnya. Oke, okay. selain dengan uh, bekerja sama dengan institusi pendidikan, SCCA ini juga memiliki kerjasama khusus dengan beberapa perusahaan. Tidak hanya perusahaan, tapi juga uh, beberapa uh, apa namanya kantor akutan publik gitu ya, yang nantinya mereka akan disebut sebagai SCCA Approved Employer. Jadi mereka ini adalah bagian-bagian uh, uh, dari SCCA Approved Employer di dunia yang sudah uh, jumlahnya mencapai 7.571 Approved Employer. Ya, jadi uh, tersebar dimanapun uh, nanti bagi yang memiliki sertifikat uh, untuk SCA. Dia tidak hanya bisa bekerja di Indonesia, tapi uh, mereka juga bisa mengembangkan karirnya hingga ke luar negeri. Ya, jadi di sini para pemberi kerja itu mempercayai SCCA untuk bisa menyediakan uh, para profesional yang tentu saja mahir di bidang akuntansi dan finance. Oke, okay. uh, selanjutnya. Oke, okay. berikutnya adalah kenapa SCCA? 
Nah, di sini uh, selanjutnya adalah mungkin di next slide-nya akan dijelaskan. Oke, okay. SCCA sendiri tentu saja punya kualifikasi. Apa aja ya kualifikasi yang berkaitan uh, untuk bisa kita memiliki gelar SCCA tersebut. Pertama adalah, uh, tentu saja ini adalah kualifikasi kelas dunia yang sudah relevan dengan dunia industri. Perkembangannya selalu update. Lalu yang kedua, uh, tentu saja mencakup semua bidang bisnis dan keuangan. Kemudian bisa memperdalam uh, pemahaman kita tentang standar akuntansi secara internasional seperti IFF, uh, IFRS gitu ya, dan juga uh, bisnis in English. Selanjutnya, ACCA sendiri juga adalah suatu metode pendidikan gitu atau studi yang sifatnya fleksibel dan juga ongoing atau berkelanjutan gitu ya, di mana di sini tidak ada badan akuntansi profesional lain yang bisa menawarkan uh, dukungan belajar atau juga mungkin fleksibilitas yang lebih baik dari SCCA. Jadi sangat fleksibel sekali, kapanpun kalian uh, berkeinginan untuk mengambil itu bisa, tidak ter, ter, uh, apa namanya, terblok dengan usia juga, kapanpun, dimanapun itu kalian bisa lakukan, karena sifatnya sangat fleksibel. Oke, okay? Karena uh, SCCA sendiri itu menyediakan pilihan belajar yang sifatnya itu ada uh, paruh waktu, bisa juga belajar secara mandiri dan juga pembelajaran secara online. Jadi sangat fleksibel. Dan yang terakhir, adanya pengakuan akademik gitu ya dan profesional serta memiliki jaringan yang sangat kuas yang sangat kuat dan juga sangat luas. Begitu. Oke, okay, next slide. Oke. Okay. Dan berikut ini adalah termasuk slide terakhir saya gitu ya. Kenapa sih kita harus join ACCA gitu ya? Yang pertama adalah dengan adanya SCCA, tentu saja itu bisa menjadi modal kita untuk membangun karir yang lebih baik. Seperti tadi saya singgung ya, SCCA itu adalah punya kualifikasi yang bergengsi gitu ya untuk para pemberi kerja. Karena e, dipercaya orang-orang yang memiliki gelar SCCA ini dia punya keterampilan, dia punya pemikiran, bahkan dia punya pendapat yang tentu saja akan sangat berguna di tempat e, mereka bekerja. Dan tentu saja itu bisa memberikan nilai uh, tinggi untuk bisnis di mana tempat dia bekerja. ya. Jadi SCCA itu bisa membangun karir lebih baik. Berikutnya, kualifikasi SCCA uh, itu bisa ditempatkan di seluruh dunia. ya. Jadi kalau lulus ujian uh, dan bisa memegang gelar SCCA, kalian gitu ya bisa bekerja dengan bebas di manapun di dunia dan secara global. Karena di sini sifatnya SCCA itu sudah diakui secara luas gitu ya oleh organisasi internasional besar. World Bank, PBB itu sudah mengakui SCCA. Oke, okay? dan berikutnya uh, anggota SCCA itu harus terus mengembangkan keterampilan profesional mereka sepanjang hidup. Jadi uh, tentu saja uh, pengetahuan dan keterampilan para anggota SCCA tersebut gitu, atau SCCA member itu harus up to date. Ya, jadi dengan kata lain, dengan update yang dimilikinya gitu ya, uh, tentu saja si SCCA member itu uh, apa namanya bisa bekerja dengan mudah gitu ya dan bisa beradaptasi dengan lebih cepat. Dan yang terakhir itu adalah kualifikasi SCCA itu adalah bisa dibilang kualifikasi yang sangat ekonomis gitu ya untuk memperoleh pengetahuan serta keahlian. Jadi di sini maksudnya adalah anggota uh, SCCA uh, bisa mengembangkan ilmunya tidak hanya pengetahuan dari sisi teknis akuntansi saja ataupun keuangan gitu ya, tapi bagaimana juga mereka bisa mengembangkan keterampilan mereka dalam hal memanajemen organisasi. Ya, jadi suatu kombinasi yang uh, sangat apik gitu ya, uh, di mana kombinasi keterampilan teknis akuntansi dan juga manajemen menjadi satu di dalam SCCA. Ya, begitu teman-teman kurang lebih penjelasan saya terkait SCCA. RJ next. Thank you. Oke, hey, thank you Ustadzia. Terima kasih atas penjelasannya tentang SCCA ya. Semoga cukup jelas buat teman-teman tentang apa SCCA ini ya. Seberapa diakui dan terakreditasi gelar dan sertifikasi SCCA ini di seluruh dunia. Jadi tidak khawatir, hmm. jangan khawatir kalau misalnya ada pertanyaan lagi kita juga akan ada sebuah kayak Q&A session buat teman-teman yang juga mungkin ingin cari tahu lebih lanjut mengenai SCCA setelah ini ya. Maybe sekarang kita bisa balik lagi ke Miss Abby. Are you back? Yeah, yeah, I'm okay now. Okay, hello Miss. <laughs> yeah, yeah, sorry. Welcome back. Welcome back. No worries, no worries. Back. <laughs> no worries. Please continue, Miss. Yeah, yeah, sure. Okay, actually, uh, what just happened is quite a good example about what we just talked about when we make difficulties shy complaints. 
<laughs> you know, what I found is my, my laptop was not charging at all. So it's become red. So I was in a bit of panic. Okay, what happened? But I, I know that I have to stop. Otherwise you just found me disappear, right? <laughs> okay, so what just happened in the last five minutes? Did I complain? Yes, if I need to complain, I will complain myself. Why didn't you check uh, whether it was charging? Why didn't you charge it full? But did it help? Did not help? So I was thinking, okay, how do I solve the problem? So I tried to uh, borrow the laptop from my husband, but he was not at home. So I turned on his laptop. I found the password is wrong. So I called him, he didn't pick up the phone. <laughs> I was, okay, what can I do? So I asked uh, another two, I have two, um, nephews living in my house so i asked him bring your laptop to me and they say okay we bring in and say i need a usb they say no usb so what can i do i'm just like okay i found okay probably the last solution what i can do is i log the zoom into my mobile phone without a slice i just finished the presentation so that's my last uh, solution but luckily my nephew told me, well, I think it's a problem of your socket. It's not the problem of your laptop because we tried in outside a room, it's all charging. Okay, so finally I come back here. <laughs> so I think uh, what just happened, you know, nothing is a uh, coincidence. I think it's just a very good example for me to show you that when we really um, have something that difficulties in front of us, what do we need to do? Instead of complaining, we need to think how to solve the problem. That's the most important thing. Okay, <laughs> okay, let's continue. Yeah. So, do you want to get rich overnight? Yeah. Yes or no? Who <laughs> want yes? Yes. Raise up your hand if you want yes. Or a cross? No. <laughs> okay. I ask again. Do you want to get rich overnight? Okay. My answer will give to you is no. Don't think about it. Why? Why? Um, because you can never get to the wealth that beyond your knowledge, beyond your capability. If you really just by luck to get a big fortune, you will lose all of them because of your stupidity, stupidity which means you don't really have the knowledge and capability to hold the fortune, okay? So don't think about it. I think it's a, a good uh, explanation to say why there are so many people when, when they win the lottery, but they finally live in a bankruptcy in the end, right? Because they don't have enough knowledge and capability to keep the wealth. Okay, so what do we need to do? Making progress day by day. Yeah. You may go to read the book, The Compound Impact. Uh, for us, the finance students, we know that when we calculate the future value of the project or anything that we use, have to use the compound to, to calculate. In our life, the compound effect is also huge. So what we need to think is that every day we progress a little bit, little by little, and then in the end, it will have the compound effect which will have a great impact to our life. We finally can get into the place we were dreamed to. Okay, another how. Let's look at the five elements of the wealth again. Time, energy, network, capabilities, money. Do you always hear someone say, oh, I'm sorry, I don't have time. Oh no, I'm, I'm too tired, I cannot do it because my health is not good. Or someone will say, but I cannot get into the network. I don't know people. The people surrounding me are just the same with me. Or someone will say, no, I cannot do this because I have never learned about it or most of the time you will hear, I have no money. Yeah. But what we can do if we are lack of something? Treat. What is treat? You use something 
to exchange another thing. For example, can I use time to exchange my energy? Yes, of course. I can take a rest, right? So I spend my time to gain my energy back. Can I use energy to gain my network? Yeah, of course. In order to get into get to know someone, uh, I can provide my help, right? I can provide my help and can provide my time to get someone's um, trust, to get someone to understand me and know me, and I get into that network. Can I use my network to gain capabilities? Yes, we can. After we get into a network, we get to know the people there. They have the knowledge, they have the capabilities we don't have, we learn from them. We gain the capabilities. Can we exchange the capabilities with money? Yes, we can, right? If I'm well, able to do something, we can exchange with money. For example, if you are a university student, think about what kind of capabilities you have. For example, you can play tennis, right? And you can be a tennis coach for others. You use the capabilities to exchange your money. So there are many other things. But for capabilities to exchange money, do you find that in this world, there are many people full of capabilities, but they live in poor? Do you know why? Because they don't know how to make their capabilities into money, which is how to commercialize their capabilities. We, there is a saying that if you walk on the street, there are millions of people who are so talented, who are so capable, but they live in poor. So what we need to know is how do we treat our capabilities in money? You need to see it. You need to see whether there's a market, there is a need, and then you can exchange it. Okay, so on the other hand, can we use money to exchange our capabilities? Okay, that is a, a, I think, example from myself I would like to share with you, um, which is my journey to study ACCA. Actually, I studied ACCA uh, in the last year of my university, that is more than 10 years ago. Yeah, in, I think in uh, 2007, yeah, <laughs> so earlier, yeah. 2007. Okay, I studied uh, until the P level, but I didn't, um, I was not able to pass it because I studied everything by myself. Okay, I didn't take a course, why? Because I think it's too expensive. For the exam itself, I already spent a lot of money. You know, the membership fee and the exam fee, I already spent so much. So I think, why do I not, I don't want to waste the, uh, spend the money to take a course because I think I can handle myself. And then I failed in the P2 business analysis three times, three times, you know. So it made me just lose the confidence. I told myself, no, my English is not good enough, you know. There are so many questions you have, you have to write for the for three hours unstoppable. And my English, I'm not a native person. The probably one idea, they just use one sentence. I have to use three sentences to elaborate. It's just not my way. I said to myself, give it up. So I did give up. So there are more than five years I didn't touch the ACC anymore because I think it's not my way. But it's by a very, um, how to say, uh, a, a chance. I got a talk with one of my family members and they said to me, don't give up. And my husband also said to me, if you give up, I think you will become a regret in your life. So at that time, I decide, okay, I want to continue. But I look at that, my life. At that time, I already have two kids and I was working. So I said to myself, I don't have time to study. So what I can do if I want to continue? At that time, I think I need to use money to exchange the time in order to get the capabilities. So I gave up my job. I bought a ticket, fly back to China, I take a course, okay? For three months, finally, I passed the last two course of the ACCA. I become, finally become ACCA member. 
So if I calculate the money that I lost in that period, period, the money I spent plus the salary I lost, I think around 200 million I lost. But you know, after I got to ACCA, I got into a better job, which gave me double salary. So I use my capabilities to exchange money back. Okay, so I hope this example can give you some idea that when sometimes we say we are lack of something, do we ever think, can we exchange it? Can we trade it? I think you will get your answer, okay? Another thing, how accounts, I think uh, by manage also mentioned about it. When you have money, you need to know how to, uh, how to spend your money to separate into several accounts you spend, okay? Here I give you an uh, idea. We can have five accounts in our life. First one, living account. Yeah, we put our money into a living account, even account for our daily spending. Another one, studying account. This is very important. Why? Because we need to keep studying to in improve our capabilities. Yeah, this is an investment account actually. Remember what I just said, invest our asset, which will bring our future income. So studying account, I would suggest not less than 10% of your income you should spend in your study. Trust me. Okay, investment account, yes. You can um, make some investment, try starting from now, okay? You can choose the low risk, low return or high risk, high return one. Depends on your risk appetite and depends on your income you have, okay? This is actually a big uh, topic in how to do your investment. Yeah, this can be elaborate more. You can even take some course about it or you even can try in our simulation, you will really know, okay, what kind of investment you can make. Yeah. Entertainment account. Why do you have to pick putting entertainment in account? Amuse yourself, you need to amuse yourself. You know, there are some people that when they are poor, they try very hard to make money. They, they sacrifice everything of their self. They sacrifice all their needs. But when they suddenly get rich, they lose the direction. They spend so much money in, you know, in something that uh, to entertain them, they eat, they drink, or they even do some illegal thing. Because the lack of things in the past, in the poor, and now after they get rich, they lost their directions. So when you, when, even if you are in the poor, try to spare a little bit to entertain yourself, to treat yourself, treat yourself well, okay? You are worth it. You come to this world is not to suffering, it's to enjoy the world. So don't, rem don't forget yourself. Another one is Thanksgiving account. The Thanksgiving, we have to Thanksgive to many things. We Thanksgive to this world. We give Thanksgive to our charities, our society, our friends, our parents, so many people that you need to do the Thanksgiving to. Okay, so for every income, you try to separate them into different accounts. But how much the proportion depends on different time you are in, different situation you are in, okay? Well, even I share with you this five accounts, is there any, is there a, 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 a little voice in your mind? You will say, but oh, sorry, I don't have much money. I have to, you know, I, I probably only have the money for living. <laughs> I have nothing left. Is it in your mind? It's a little invoice. You say, oh, I will do that when I have more money, when I get rich. Do you have this kind of little invoice in your mind? Okay, I will show you an example. Sorry, this one is in Chinese. <laughs> yeah, because this is my uh, original record. Uh, so it's in Chinese, but I will explain to you. This is a um, trial I have done with my 10-year-old daughter. But actually, when I do this with her, she was only eight years old, which is in the year 2020. Uh, when the COVID was here and we have to study and work from home. So in that three years, uh, 
I had a, a trial uh, experiment with, with, the, with her, which is to um, sell the cake. She likes to do the baking, bakery, so we sell the cake. And then she also teach uh, our neighbor, the, the kids, uh, Chinese. Yeah, in, in this way to earn money, okay? I teach her all from the way from the beginning, how to do the uh, how to do the advertisement, how to do the pricing, how to sell it, do the delivery, how to do the bookkeeping when you receive the money. And then the last one is how do you spend your money? Okay, so I um, talked with her about these five accounts. She said the living account and the study account, she doesn't have to put the money in because it was paid by me. Yes, for sure. Yeah, I pay for her. <laughs> so she didn't put the money in these two accounts. And then she made a uh, she 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 made a distribution into other needs. First one, she thinks that uh, because all her living expenses is actually reimbursed by us, supported by us, so she would like to put more money into investment for future investment. Okay, if she earned one million, she will put nine hundred million into a mutual fund. Okay, I help her to open an account in the mutual fund and I do a weekly, uh, weekly investment, actually 20,000 per week. <laughs> yeah, so I, I help her do that. So she will she put 90% into this mutual fund for the future investment because it's, um, she, she said she is actually nurturing a, a goose that's going to give her a gold egg in the future. <laughs> If you have read that book, yeah. Okay. Um, <clears throat> another 50, she will give to the poor people. Yeah, she will give to the poor people because that school also sometimes collecting the money uh, and to uh, to give to the poor people or give to the church. Well, but, but before, of course, he, she asked the money from me. Yeah, but now she can take out from her own money. And then she put another 50 to entertain herself. So she has the pocket money to spend herself. So from, the, from then on, everything she want to buy, she never asked me money from me anymore. She even buys things for her younger brother. Okay, so I think if an eight year old with one million in her hand, she can do the distribution of the income, why can't you? Starting from small, starting from the beginning, make it into your habit, you will finally bring you something. Okay, so I think that's the actually uh, the end of my sharing and I hope uh, it bring, you know, uh, give you some idea. And I really welcome you to interact with me and to, uh, if you have any questions or if you have any ideas you want to share, um, and thank you for your time. Miss Abby, really thank you for, for sharing this, you know. Uh, now I know that why China is very successful, because I believe maybe parents in China are teaching their kids uh, how to manage finances from so young age, you know, uh, and, you know, learning to be self-independent. I said, I, I'm inspired, uh, Miss Abby, so thank you so much. Thank you, thank you. Actually, not, I, I still have to say that not so many parents realize it. That's why we have to promote the idea to more people because it's yep. really important. Um, for the personal financing, actually it can become, uh, uh, when the kids starting from early age get to know the idea about it, it's not only about the finance, it's actually about their life planning. About our life planning. Yeah, life planning. If we can plan our life from the early age, you can just imagine how much the differences will become. Yeah, yeah. That's yeah. Why, that you know, brings them to life. think, think. You know, not only use their heart, but think. Yes. So the thinking makes the person okay. Now I'm okay. All my finances are all thought led. You know, not emotions led. So that's why I mm -hmm. kept saying you need to detach, detach emotions from from finances. You know, if not, all the decisions will be simply based on uh, emotions. Yeah. But thank you so much. Thank you so much. Thank you. Thank you very much, Ms. Abby, for sharing. And I hope this is very, this would be useful for the students here and very helpful in managing finances. Yeah.
Oke, okay. uh, sekarang kita juga ada Miss Nikita ya untuk membantu juga untuk penjelasan buat regular program ACCA dan mengenai uh, personal finance. Ya, yeah. since the time is only 10 minutes left, so we just keep it short. Yeah. Okay. Oke. Okay. Uh, thank you RJ for the time. Uh, I just want to double check. Can you all see my screen? And see full my... screen? Yeah, I'll do full screen. Yeah. Okay, yeah. Hello, everyone. Uh, thank you for your time today. Um, I will continue my session based on Miss Lydia's uh, explanation uh, tentang what is ACCA, kenapa kita harus join ACCA, and what is the program of ACCA. Ya kan? Jadi, uh, di LSAF, kita ada tiga program. Ya, uh, program nomor satu uh, adalah program Advanced Diploma in Accounting and Business. Nah, untuk itu, student harus kerjakan tiga mata kuliah doang. Ya, nah, in the three mata kuliah, it will be financial reporting, ya kan? audit and assurance, dan financial management. Ya, jadi student bisa melakukan tiga mata kuliah. Uh, dan bisa mendapatkan Advanced Diploma in Accounting and Business dari Oxford Brookes University UK. Durasinya untuk mendapatkan Advanced Diploma in Accounting and Business uh, dari UK adalah satu tahun doang. Nah, banyak student suka tanya ke Miss Nikita, kan kita juga kuliah di Atma Jaya. Bagaimana kita bisa function our time, manage our schedule. Now for that, uh, for Atma Jai students and for all the university students, all our classes are setiap Sabtu. Jadi, uh, it will be from 10 to 1, jam 10 sampai jam 1, satu mata kuliah. Then from 2 to 5, the another uh, mata kuliah, another module. So within one year, satu tahun, uh, you can get uh, this advanced diploma. Yeah, uh, the second program that we have is called the S1 program. You know, mainly we call it the Bachelor's in Applied Accounting uh, from Oxford Brookes University. Now, a lot of students tell me, Miss, kan kita sudah ada gelar dari Atma Jaya. Kenapa we have to do this again? You know, or why 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 join LSAF? Now, with your current degree, you are getting a local, good, well recognized degree. Yeah, but how about if you know companies say that where is your international qualification? Or for example, you want to uh, apply in a multinational company, right? Uh, and then they say, okay, where is your international degree? You know, so this will help you get a uh, standout, or you will be very unique from all the other applications that are applying for the job. You will have a dual degree, so one degree that you're receiving from Atma Jai University, which is a very prestigious university. And then you will also be getting an S1 from Oxford Brookes University as well, yeah? Now, as of this program, it will also be three mata kuliah, yeah, which is financial reporting, audit and insurance and financial management. But uh, you have to do uh, a research and analysis project as well. Uh, we call it the script C. So it's like a report that you would have to do. And the duration of this report is uh, three months. So for students to get the bachelor's degree in applied accounting, uh, the duration is around satu tahun and tiga bulan. So satu tahun is for this uh, tiga mata kuliah, and then the tiga bulan is for the research and analysis project. So once students complete this, uh, they can already get an S satu, yeah, from Oxford Brookes University. And that's very very amazing, you know. Biasanya if we go to kuliah and get the S satu, it's empat tahun, right? But then for us, if you join LSAF, it's only less than dua tahun, you can already get an international degree, yeah? So that is the second program that we have. The third program that we have is the Strategic Professional Program. Uh, now with this, it is for you to get the ACCA title behind your name. For example, like Mr. Manish, he is an ACCA member, or Miss Abby, who is also an ACCA member. So if you want to have the professional title behind your name, yeah, which is the ACCA title, uh, students have to do empat mata kuliah. Yeah? So two compulsory over here, from here, strategic business leader and strategic business reporting. And then they can pick two over here. So this is Wajib. 
and this is optional yeah and the duration of the strategic professional level is also satu tahun yeah but with uh, to get the acca title behind your name you don't only have to do this mata kuliah you also have to submit three years working experience di bidang accounting and finance. So you would have to submit tiga tahun pengalaman kerja di bidang accounting and finance. Yeah, Then only you would be able to get the ACC title behind your name. Uh, with LSEA, because uh, we have a lot of networks, we sometimes do help students to also get the opportunity to work uh, in multinational companies or in international companies or also in local companies to get that experience as well. Because as a young student, I think we know how, how hard it is you know, to go to jobs DB and apply or to go to job street and write the same same thing you know hundred and hundred hundred times to just get a job so you know to to break that hassle uh, some we we do help students as well to get the job as well yeah so this is mainly the three programs that we have uh but sometimes students feel that oh uh, Nik miss nikita i don't think acc is still enough for me so i juga mau mendapatkan s2 juga you know so we do have three options as well uh, for students if they want to get an S2 as well. It can be from University of London, yeah, to get the master's in professional accountancy, or uh, they can have it in Canada. We actually have a student. Her name is uh, Shanice. I don't know if you guys know her. Uh, she's actually finished, uh, she's going to finish her BSc, and now she's also traveling to Canada as well to further complete her studies. So, uh, we actually have a lot, a lot of Atma Jaya students who have taken the program and also successfully completed, you know. So yeah, Canada, also Australia as well, yeah, to get the master's in professional accounting as well. So this is mainly about the program. Now, as of the fees, I will just briefly uh, explain about the fees. So this is the fees for the S1 program or the BSc program, the Bachelor's uh, in Applied Accounting. So normally for me or RJ or any other normal students, uh, we had to pay sekitar 90 juta. But for all Atma, all Atma Jaya students who are joining this webinar, we're giving you a special, special offer. Yeah, only setengah the harga that which is of our regular fees. So it is around forty-seven million five hundred, but it can be too chill. So it's not too heavy for you uh, to pay as well. And this fees includes everything. So it's a one-time fee. Yeah, cuma satu kali bayar. Okay. Uh, and then as of the advanced diploma, uh, the fees is a little bit lower because there is no scripty, there is no the research and analysis project. So the regular fee was sekitar 64, but now students of Atma Jaya joining this webinar will only have to pay half of it, yeah, which is sekitar uh, 32 juta. Uh, now, as Miss Abby mentioned about the personal finance simulation, we also have... Um, the, the training for it or the program for it. If any one of you feels that, you know, I want to learn more about finance, you know, I need to uh, build up my, my finance literacy yeah, huh? in a fun way, you know. With ACC, it's very academic. But if you feel that, okay, with ACC, I also want to have something that is more practical, more fun, more socially um uh, entertaining yeah with your friends you can invite your friends in we also have this personal finance uh, simulation where with this fees yeah uh, you can get the personal finance simulation which is a two-day live workshop yeah uh, with the coach and then nine day online training camp and then um, a wealth flow sand table the one that mr money showed uh, that 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 uh, sand table is also what you will be getting as well. Now, for all of you, uh, because uh, we we are giving all of you a special offer. So, if all of you would like to join in the next uh, seven days and register with us, we have an early bird discount, like a promo. So, from uh, 3,8, it will be now only 3,6. Yeah, so do hurry up and register with us and get the discount and be a part of um, this collaboration with LSF and Atma Jaya. Okay. Yeah, RJ, uh, okay. I believe that is all from all right. my side.
Yes, I, I will sense. share with everyone uh, my contact number. Uh, if <laughs> anyone, if you would like to uh, speak with me or register with us, uh, I will share with you my contact number. Yeah. Okay, thank, thank you, Miss Nikita, for the explanation to penjelasannya. Nah, sebelum kita berakhir, karena kita juga tidak lama, mau sedikit sharing nih buat teman-teman uh, dari saya sebagai murid LSF ya, ingin membagi pengalaman belajar selama di LSF. Jadi yang kayak dibicarakan, dibicarakan tadi, mau sedikit saya rangkum bahwa ACC ini emang lembaga sertifikasi yang sudah terakreditasi di hampir 180 negara ya. Dan emang alasan utama saya untuk mengikuti program LSF untuk belajar ACC ini adalah untuk biar ke depannya bisa dapat kesempatan untuk kerja di perusahaan-perusahaan yang negeri-negeri yang mengakui ACC. Jadi nggak perlu ragu lagi tuh untuk kayak mau jadi sebagai akuntan atau kayak auditor. Uh, tax advisor atau bidang-bidang kerja yang menjatuh dalam area akuntansi karena memang gelar ACC ini sangat dikenal di mana-mana dan berterima kasih juga pada LSF ya lembaga mm-hmm. LSF karena sebelum adanya LSF itu belum ada lembaga yang uh, offer yang memberikan kesempatan untuk belajar ACC ini ya dan dari LSF itu membeli uh, memberi kita tur yang sangat pas untuk mau kemana untuk seperti apa dan mereka juga menyediakan kelas-kelas dengan dosen-dosen yang sudah tersertifikasi untuk uh, membagi materi-materi yang perlu diselesaikan ya buat mendapat gelar ACC ini dan perjalanan saya selama di LSF ini lumayan lancar walaupun ya mungkin ada pandemi Covid-19 yang bisa dibilang uh, menghambat kegiatan belajar mengajar ya tapi LSF tetap dengan kesediaan untuk uh, kelas-kelas online dan tetap memberi kesempatan buat murid-muridnya untuk ujian dan lulus menerima sertifikat ACC ini ya walaupun dalam masa pandemi dan sekarang juga LSF mengadakan kelas-kelas uh, hybrid ya di mana murid-murid dikasih kesempatan untuk belajar online dari rumah ataupun datang langsung ke kampus LSF jadi bisa dibilang LSF ini bisa disesuaikan dengan cara-cara atau mungkin metode-metode tersendiri untuk belajar ya yang untuk paling enaknya seperti apa dan ya akhirnya uh, kita semua bisa menerima gelar ACC ini jadi, jika kita menjoin dengan LSF oke okay. Yeah, uh, RJ, I just wanted to say that you know, uh, Atma Jaya University has been a great uh, partner. Definitely, uh, sir. Because Atma Jaya, because of their hard work, I'm able to get the accreditation. Jadi tadi yang dijelaskan kita itu kenapa hanya bisa tiga modul is because people like Bolivia and Dubai and all they work hard to get the accreditation for the remaining modules. Betul. So Betul. I hope you uh, appreciate that karena you are in Atma Jaya, you don't have to do all the modules like I had to do all the 14 modules. Yeah? modules yes. I think this accreditation itu is also time bound. Dan selamanya, every time, uh, Atma Jai keeps upgrading the accreditation, you see. So, while the accreditation is active, uh, keep it, keep joining this program to take benefit of those uh, exemption. Yeah, karena during my time, I had to do all the exam. And, and and what I really appreciate from Atma Jai is the hard work in keep innovating, uh, you know. So that's why I, I particularly feel very proud and honored that uh, we have Atma Jaya as our uh, partners and the University of uh, Atma Jaya students. It will be when it comes to uh, employability, uh, we personally want to ensure that you have all the access for employability in Indonesia, in Singapore, Malaysia, Australia. So. I'm excited for you to graduate with, uh, uh, with the ACCA and with the bachelor's degree, and then we will assist you in your in your uh, uh, progression. So for today's session, those who have actually joined the personal finance, uh, please give your uh, uh, those who have already registered. Uh, let's give them a, a certificate of participation in the personal finance because there's a lot of knowledge imparted today. Yeah, so so I think let's let's award the uh, certificate for those who are attending today. Yes, buat yang udah hadir hari ini, terima kasih. Dan mungkin uh, kita ada kasih sebuah feedback form, kayak saya Manis bilang tadi, dengan isi feedback form ini, uh, teman-teman bisa mendapat kesempatan untuk dapat uh, certificate of participation ya. Dan kita juga sudah mendekati akhir acara hari ini, sebelum kita tutup acaranya, mungkin yang masih kurang jelas ada pertanyaan-pertanyaan tertentu, yeah. bisa diberi kesempatan untuk bertanya sekarang ya. Ataupun memberi feedback. Mungkin dari teman-teman yang hadir di Zoom meeting hari ini. Kalau ada pertanyaan boleh silakan di unmute langsung atau mungkin tulis di chat box ini. Uh, Aj, I have one question maybe. Yes, Miss Lydia. Uh, untuk mahasiswa Atma Jaya, khususnya dari prodi akuntansi, kira-kira kalau mau join program ini bisa dari semester berapa ya? 
mungkin bisa dibantu dijawab dari miski kita. Miski kita ya. Oke. Okay. Uh, hi, Miss Lydia. Hi. Uh, I think that's a very, very good question. Uh, so actually, to be very honest with you, we don't have a minimum semester for students to join the the program. But mainly, most of the students that join our program are from semester empat, yeah. Um, yeah, so they do start from semester empat because I think uh, during that time, they already learned the basics. So for them to cope up with the three modules, yang FR, financial reporting, audit and assurance, at the financial management, it is more easier for them to blend in and cope up. Jadi sekitar semester empat uh, would be the right time, I think, for students. But if they feel that from semester tiga as well, they want to start, the earlier the better. Uh, we don't really have the restriction, Miss Lydia. Okay, thank you, Miss Nikita. Yeah. Uh, maybe Miss Lady, I would like to add as well about our intake. Ya kan? Jadi our intake itu is uh, between July and January. So I believe for everyone over here, if you guys feel that you want to have the ACC qualification and have the international gelar uh, within the duration of one, one and a half year, then I think it would be best uh, for all of you to register for the January intake. Uh, yeah, and finish it off within one and a half year. Thank you, Nikita, for the information. Thank you, Mr. Dede, for the question. Uh, mungkin teman-teman lain, kalau masih ada pertanyaan, bisa di chat langsung atau buka mic -nya. Dan ya, sekali lagi ya, buat uh, feedback form ya yang dikirim di chat box, itu untuk dapat certificate of participation. Ya. It would be great if you guys uh, filled it up. Dari Miss Wendy, any comments? Actually, I just want to know, nih, Mr. Menis, you already talk about the how to manage, yeah, the uh, especially for the finance, yeah, uh, for the students, Mr. Menis. What is the recommendation, actually, yeah, or the what do you call it, the trick, lah, yeah. Uh, the best way for the students to manage their finance, yeah, because the students uh, not like us, yeah, <laughs> they're still a teenager and still want to spend uh, their money. Maybe for uh, for the un unimportant things, yeah. So, what is your your ini lah best solution or your recommendation for the students to manage their finance. Yes, Maybe yes. The... yes. <laughs> Thank you so much. Yeah. But maybe actually, you know, I was thinking for the younger, younger ones itu because they have that limited uh, uh, inflow or income. I think from like Bu uh, Miss Abby explained from now itself, think about multiple revenue streams. And I think one of the things that uh, younger ones are doing now is to become uh, influencers, you know, becoming influencers. So when they create content and then they build up those number of uh, followers and uh, viewers and with a nice content, you know, not doing nasty stuff on the internet, but good content, you know, sharing your knowledge about finance, share something that is useful to the to the people, you know, they like you, they become like, like, you know, we have uh, 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 last time, uh, Shanice from Atma Jaya, you know, she, she really inspired people, you know, inspire, well, what people need is inspiration. So she got a lot of, she almost became like an influencer. So once you have that, that's also an asset because that will help you to generate, uh, uh, you know, when you generate income. So I think one of the ways is to, at that at current age, is to start building your personal uh, branding because what, what you will eventually sell is you as your portfolio. You know that uh, this is my competence. This is what I am. This is my uh, so. Jangan malu. You know they many people refuse to go on the social media karena kurang pede, kurang confidence. I think one of the ways is to actually build that confidence through appearing in the in the social media. So I'm I'm not against social media. So the young guys, itu uh, uh, build this and then use it to enhance your knowledge uh, and skills. Okay. 
this is how I do digital marketing. So I, I think one of the biggest investment is investing in your own self. So you keep, like Miss Eddie said, yeah, build your capabilities, invest in your capabilities, karena nanti itu yang akan di, dijual, you know. Uh, people will come to know, okay, this is what your capabilities are. So continue to keep growing, like, that's my, my big advice, yeah. Yes, yes, I think it's a good thing, yeah. Mm-hmm. Advice, yeah, for the teenagers, nih, for the yes. for our students, actually. Uh, yes. And how about uh, RG? You still a student yes, yes. now? So what yes. Is, uh, <laughs> your ini? How do you manage your finances, RG? <laughs> <laughs> uh, hmm, as a student, yeah, to manage my finance, yeah, not uh, spend my my allowance wisely not go around like like what someone said don't be too influenced with what's there on social media what's your what your friends doing they going out here doing doing this having fun but we have to manage ourselves we have to uh, measure what we can spend we can't overextend ourselves so we really have to uh, look out of that although yeah temp- it's very tempting you know as a teenager as a student to go out do this do that but yeah uh, looking at the long term it's better to uh, stay conservative stay safe And just yeah, yeah. stay smart. <laughs> yeah. And you, you know, you know, all my friends have very fancy watches. <laughs> I, 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 and they always mock at my watch. You know, <laughs> why you're always? I said, uh, you just need to see time in your handphone. Why do you need a fancy watch? <laughs> right. Travel by business class, and you know, I said, well, I don't need all that. You know, I just need yeah. to be from one place to another. Yeah, so, yeah, definitely. yeah. I understand the pressure. I understand. Yeah. The We have to fight the resist, resist the temptation, you know. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah. Uh, sebenarnya ini ya godaan terbesar itu memang dari network. That, that's betul. negative negative ini ya. Yeah, betul, betul. Uh, for ini ya, uh, we have a big network gitu ya. Ya jadi tadi seperti Arzi ngomong ya ini ya jadinya banyak godaan. Kalau punya teman banyak, godaannya juga banyak. Benar, benar sekali. Ya, ya. Jadi makanya ya. ini mahasiswa uh, harus wisely lah ya, uh, memanage lah ya dan memilih teman juga ya. Mesti ya. ini wisely lah, jangan ya. sampai mengikuti yang tidak benar gitu maksudnya. Betul. betul. Oke, okay. apakah mas ada lagi dari mahasiswa yang mau bertanya? Nah, they keep silence nih kalau disuruh tanya. <laughs> harus confident, harus confident. Yeah, ya, harus uh, harus percaya diri ya untuk bertanya. Jadi mulai mulai belajar lah ya. Kalau menurut saya, ini kan kalian masih bahasa so baru ya. Jadi uh, ini mesti belajar uh, berani bertanya dan juga uh, tadi seperti sudah dibilang juga ya harus wisely juga ya. untuk memilih teman dan yang lain sebagainya gitu. Oke, okay. apakah ada yang mau ditanyakan dari mahasiswa? So, all these all these are, are, are semester which, which year of students? Uh, semester first semester till uh, fourth semester. Fourth semester. Oke, okay. oke. Okay. It's good. So I think they can start planning, planning from now, and you know, yes. dig into the world of professional certification. And mm-hmm. jangan takut that the program is in English. Yeah, we use, it's a good way to improve your English. Yes. I, uh, the ACCA. So don't 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 be afraid. I I managed to finish ACCA in a, in a, in a short time. You know, can uh, <laughs> I just dedicate it uh, on the on the time and focus focus? Yeah, if you focus, pasti bisa. Jadi it's just Nothing so impossible, yeah. Uh, jangan merasa takut. That, that's what I want to say. Fear is our problem, yeah. I think rata-rata Indonesia students have a fear and confidence issue. Mm-hmm. Yes, yes, yes. Yeah, uh, that's it's a good uh, session actually for today, yeah, for our students so they can keep uh, their mind with the best uh, best mind, gitu ya. for planning their future ya. Yeah? That's right. Oke. Okay. Yep, yep. Oke, okay, kalau enggak ada apa enggak questions-questions atau pertanyaan lainnya, maybe kita bisa akhiri 
acara hari ini tapi sebelumnya saya mengundang dulu teman-teman untuk join foto bareng dengan yes. mungkin kalau yeah. boleh buka yeah. kamera masing-masing ya kita mau ada satu foto session Ayo. dulu okay. jangan malu-malu dibuka kameranya <laughs> cuma sebentar doang kok ini kita open cam sebentar and foto bareng good. That's good. Yes. Ayo kalau kalian kan mau selfie selfie nih kalau di handphone di sosial media ya <laughs> pada mau selfie selfie ayo dibuka hand itunya kameranya yes oke okay. kita ambil fotonya ya satu dua tiga satu dua tiga terakhir satu dua tiga oke okay. terima Boleh kasih ya? semuanya dan okay. thank you very much thank you thank you, thank you semuanya thank you. untuk hari ini thank you Miss Manis Miss Abi Manis Miss Abi Bu And RJ ini, RJ, thank you so much, Miss Yalina, thank, thank you so much, Priyanka, yeah. thank you so much, thank you everyone. Don't forget uh, to feel the feedback ya. Yeah. Yes. yes, don't yeah. forget to feel the feedback. Teman-teman yeah. mahasiswa yeah. semuanya. Oke, okay, thank you. Next time. Thank, thank you again.